Good afternoon, Fountain City United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you have tuned in to join us. We are continuing our Monday Moments, and we're looking at Scripture and the history of songs, and we're Mark's blessing us with a song. One of the things that led us to this is we find comfort in God's holy word, and we find comfort in music. Um, and a lot of times, we're singing God's holy word as we sing along, and we do miss being in here in our place of worship with the journey and lifting each other up, but we hope this helps you along your week. There is something healing about hearing everyone sing. Yes. It is my highlight of the week. Yes. That we come together and sing corporately together yeah. as one, yeah. and we lift up the name of Jesus. Not everybody sings. That's okay. I'm yeah. working on it. It's been 12 years, but I'm still working on some of it. <laughs> We're not done yet. <laughs> but to hear that feedback, to hear everyone lifting their voice, is it has a healing property yeah. to it. So we hope this will be healing for you. Now, the song that we're looking at is the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer, the most famous version that's sung at weddings and sometimes in scriptures, sometimes at funerals or other things, was written by Albert Hay. The lot. lot. That's it. That's how, that's how we're going to say it. And so what happened here is that's, that version is so famous that even Elvis Presley and the Beach Boys have sung that, Perry Como. So there's other folks that have decided to sing that version. And so, Mark, what version? You're going to sing a different, more contemporary version, which we love. We're excited about that. And then I'll tell some more after you're done singing. Okay. But what, where's your version coming from? So um, all of my Switchfoot fans out there, we love Switchfoot. This is uh, the lead singer of Switchfoot's name is John Foreman. Uh, John Foreman is a unique character. <laughs> um, he has a gift for putting words together. And um, one of the things I like about John Foreman is after their shows, mm -hmm. he will take his acoustic guitar and go outside and sit there for hours and just sing music with that's awesome left yeah um so that that is a personal thing that i really i like about what he does mm -hmm. but um he has some solo projects that i highly recommend they're very eclectic and and new you know they're not what you hear on love 89 or or, or the other contemporary there you go stations. we've yeah. added to their apple download that's right <laughs> Um, so, and it's called Your Love is Strong. So that has nothing to do with the Lord's Prayer, but it does. Yeah. So I'm going to try it. Here we go. Heavenly Father, always amaze me let your kingdom come in my world and in my life give me the food I need to live through today and forgive me as I forgive the people that wrong me Lead me far from temptation Deliver me from the evil one I look out the window The birds are composing not a note is out of tune or out of place I walk to the meadow and stare at the flowers Better dressed than any girl on her wedding day
So why should I worry? Why do I freak out? God knows what I need. You know what I need. Your love is, your love is, your love is strong. Your love is, your love is, your love is strong. The kingdom of the heavens is now advancing. Invade my heart, invade this broken town. The kingdom of the heavens is buried treasure. Would you sell yourself to buy? the one you found two things you told me that you were strong and you love me yes you love me your love is your love is your love is strong your love is your love is your love is strong our god in heaven hallowed be thy name above all names your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us weary sinners keep us far from our vices and deliver us from these prisons Thank you, Mark. That was awesome. I like the line about don't freak out. <laughs> that's, that's, why do I freak out? Yeah, why do I why freak do out? I yeah, you, got, don't, you don't need to do it. God knows what's going on. Well, the other part to the story of the writer, the ones that we has been sang before this song, is that he considered himself the prodigal son. He had left his parents and went somewhere and spent all his money and had to call to get money to ride the train back home. He also ended up later on writing lots of music for Walt Disney, including, was I think it was the little, oh. It's a small world. No, I don't think it was that. Um, but, but he wrote, they said about 16 things for Walt Disney. And he had left, he had written, written half of the Lord's Prayer song during the time where he had to ask for money back. And then he went on about his life. And then later on in life, he said he, he wasn't done yet. When they asked him if he was retiring, if he was done, he wasn't done yet. He went home again and finished the rest of the song, called his parents for them to be the first ones to hear it over the phone. And he played it for them and they all wept together. What a holy moment. I, I remember hearing my child, uh, both of my children, but particularly one of my children re say the Lord's Prayer in service for the first time, the whole thing. Mm. And it was, it was holy. It was holy. You know, you're just so thankful that that can stay with them. They don't have to read it. They don't have to look it up. They don't have to find it. It's, it's in them. Yes. And so God calls us to do that along with lots of other things. But the scripture we're going to refer to is Luke chapter 11. He was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. 
When was the last time we asked to be taught to pray? Prayer is hard. Yeah. And I think sometimes we he are hesitant to ask for help because it's just assumed if we're in worship or we're at CR or in other places that we already know that. So it's not something that needs to be taught. But I had some great mentors, some wonderful, holy women that forced me to be quiet because I'm not a quiet person and to learn how to pray. And I'm so thankful for them. But I think we think the disciples were just asking a question like in class. But they weren't. They were seeking a connection with God. And how did they do that? He said to them, when you pray, you say this. And they said the Lord's Prayer. So that's what I want to close with today. I want us to say the Lord's Prayer together, um, wherever you are. And if you're watching this and you're not supposed to or you can't turn on the volume, it's okay. Or turn, you know, you can't speak out loud because you're at work in a cubicle somewhere. It's okay. We'll I'm pray. I'll put the words on the Screen. On the screen. Yeah. Okay. So Mark's going to set us up. Left. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that will be our prayer. And we just wish you um, love and hope and peace and joy and happiness through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We're thankful you're turning in and we want you to know that we're here for you. So before you get to that, I was going to add one of the things that, that um, the, one of the things that I am ashamed of in my personal life sometimes is when someone goes, who would like to pray? Oh, yeah. In a group setting. And then everybody goes. And everybody, you know, and, and in my, my brain, I'm going, oh, please not me. Please not me. Please not me. And that, <laughs> I, I have to, I confess that. Yeah. That's a, that's a sin. Yeah. That is something that I need to, yeah. I should jump yeah. at the opportunity yeah. to lift up. Yeah. It's hard. Lord. It's hard, though. It, it is hard. And then if the pastor is around. Right, and then if the pastor is around, people feel intimidated. Yes. And I've had folks, I'll say, so-and-so, will you pray? And these are holy church leaders I love with all my heart. And they say, no, I don't pray in public. And I, I just want to say, oh, we need your heart. We know, I know you can. And um, Sounds like a great discipleship class. Yeah, praying. Yes. Well, and, and Tim has done pray, How to Pray on Wednesday nights. That's right. Tim um, Brown, yeah. And... I just, I feel like I need to tell y'all this one story. Okay. Sorry, but I, I think it's good. I love her stories. Um, I was on an Emmaus walk and was with different folks, and they don't know one another, and so they didn't know I was a pastor, and so I was escaping and getting filled instead of having to offer to others, and later on, one of them found out that I was a pastor, and she was mortified that I would be present there. And she had, she was a recovering addict and she was there to learn and um, wonderful person. We got to the chapel to pray and they said, who wants to pray? Same thing you're talking, everybody looks down. And I, and I said to her, would you pray? And she says, I don't know how. And so we talked through how to pray. And the she- The Lord's Prayer. We talked through the it Lord's Prayer, the example. but she didn't even know that. So we, we talked through calling out God's name, offering thanksgiving, um, asking for his blessings and requests, and thanking Jesus Christ for all he has done for us to have life eternally. And so we talked through some of those things, and then she prayed. That's awesome. She prayed, and it was one of the best prayers I've ever he heard in my entire life. And... Um, she wasn't afraid after that. So I felt like I had been there for that part that I, that I did my job. I have felt like times in my life that I could see my prayers. Like, just, like I needed to. Like the COVID-19. <laughs> oh. Like I needed to pump it to get it up to God. I okay. To, yeah, but that way I can see hers just going yeah. just straight up. Yeah. You know, because it yeah. was so innocent yeah. and yeah. heartfelt. I just, I felt like we were at the feet of Jesus. When she started praying, I felt like the dissension and the ascension happened and we were there. Um, and I was so thankful. I and, got Holy Ghost chicken skin. Yeah. And her confidence, she stood up and she looked different. You know, where we hear the veils taken away or the, Moses' face was different. Right. She stood up and she looked different. 
and it was amazing. We should crave that yes. every single day. Yeah. And if we Pray. spend time in prayer, we should look somewhat different. We, we should. should act different. We should. <laughs> <laughs> so let's pray. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together as you're able to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. That temptation part gets me every time. I have to take a long pause to think about what I've allowed that I shouldn't. So go forth this week. Go forth with the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We're so glad you tuned in with us. We'll wave with our masks and say it. See you. Bye. <laughs>